welcome to Synchronicity. What's going on? Why are there so many episodes this week? Is this fucking, what's going on? Is it July of 2019 all of a sudden? No, just feeling in the spirit. Uh, Ryan Singer. All right, here's what's going on with this episode. If you want to hear the first part of this conversation, go over to Ryan Singer's podcast, Me and Paranormal You. Been on there before. He's been on my show. You know what it is. The first part is there. Go listen to that first because that's the first part of this conversation. This is the second part of this conversation that's on this show, which I probably didn't have to say because it's like, how, what, what else could it be? It's a conversation. It's on this show. We talk about a lot of stuff. We open up talking about Tombstone Pizzas. Come on, you don't know what Tombstone Pizzas are? You're going to hear me talk about Trump. You're going to hear me talk about pizzas. You're going to hear me talk about McDonald's. You're going to hear me talk about a lot of stuff. It's fun times. It's good times. That's all I'm going to say on this. There, I don't really need to do a whole <clears throat> big old intro. Go check out Ryan. There are links on this episode to all his shit. Me and Paranormal You. He just released a little short film. That's going to be linked there. It's going to be links to his Instagram and his Twitter and all the things you want to do. Do you have a Patreon yet? Ryan, get one of those. He's got stuff. Go check it out. It's all there. Uh, tour dates will be coming for him because uh, he does the comedy, does the comedy when people are allowed outside again. We're being forced indoors by our corporate overlords and the military, right? Is that what's going on? Nah, things are good. Things are good. We talk about good things in this episode. Uh, I hope you like it. Oh, let's do a little thing here. The wonderful folks at Ned. Do we like CBD? Do you know it's an essential service? It's being deemed an essential service uh, in the pandemic times is weed and CBD stuff. So the guys at Ned, they're still shipping stuff out. It's their two-year anniversary. Use the code SYNC, S-Y-N-C, at checkout at helloned.com. Get a magically blessed CBD full-spectrum hemp oil from them. People have been writing in, they get it for their parents, you know, people are a little skeptical. It's not psychoactive unless you want it to be, wink, wink. Also, uh, just, you, I was about to stop the ad and go into people sending me weed, but go check that out, seriously, helloned.com, use the code SYNC at checkout, works out for everyone, they're happy, I'm happy, you're happy, win, 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 it's the best. Uh, also, thank you to everyone who's reached out and offered to send me stuff where I've specifically asked it for. Uh, can you send it faster, please? This pandemic is really making it difficult to get stuff that I need. All right, I appreciate it. Rate and review this podcast. Have a great time. I'll see you next week with a normal, regular solo cast episode. We're going to be doing stuff on viruses and Paracelsus and all this cool shit that's going on. Oh man, plants. Plants are cool. Plants are really cool. All right, without further ado, here's the second part of the conversation. The first part on Ryan Singer's podcast. Second part of the conversation with Ryan Singer. Here you go. I'm back. Okay, yeah, I just got back too. Sweet. God, I have leftover tombstone pizza down there. I was like, it oh, even looks, it dude. looks good. It looks just as good later. Yeah, it stays. I it uh, I cook a little longer than you're supposed to. What about you? I what do they recommend on the tombstones? I forget. Twelve to fourteen. Yeah, I usually use thirteen right in the middle. Yeah, mm. yeah. Here's a, here's a trick yeah. that I do just because. I've had to incorporate it into my cooking of it because I just can't fucking help it. Maybe it's OCD or something or it's some kind of compulsion. I always check at like 10 minutes to make sure yeah. it's not cooking too fast, but that rele that releases heat from the oven. So oh, therefore in the oven, I open it. I don't have a window on mine. What the fuck? So I have to open, I open the oven, release the heat and then I do that at least once more. I usually always, it's always, I open the oven twice before it's done cooking for some reason. And I think that gives it a, it gives it a very unique cook. You're like a iron chef of tombstone yeah. pizza cooking. You have like special techniques of when, <laughs> when precisely to open to get the perfect bake. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's all about getting that perfect bake. I would watch a show where people, three people competed to cook the perfect tombstone. Cause there's you should do that next time you're in town. Dude, we'll just I'm film totally it. Down. We'll do I'm a, totally we'll do a down. tombstone cooking contest. I'm totally down. We have to find so, a third person who's into it so or, it's sure just me, or, or unless it's just me and you, I wonder if me needs tombstone. I hope he does. Cause tombstones are so good and everyone should have the joy of a tombstone in their life. I mean, I really, I, I, I just can't stress enough how much I love a tombstone pizza. And when are we gonna tell people that this whole episode is sponsored by tombstone? 
<laughs> well, I was going to save it for the end so they didn't realize it was such <laughs> product placement. It's um, good. It's subtle, too. That's although, why. if our podcasts don't get sponsored by Tombstone Pizza after this... I'm failing. Uh, yeah. I'm failing. To, yeah, it's like, it's got to happen. Um, it's got to happen. Like the, Tombstone, the frozen pizza for the spiritual community. Right. Um, walk into 5D with a four cheese. Uh, oh, my you know? God. Yeah, I do know. I wish I had better jokes to follow up with the cook at 425 for 12 to 14 minutes or whatever your conception of time is um you know time isn't linear but cook a tombstone for 40 (laughs) cook a tombstone until you feel it's right it's a ballsy ass thing to name your pizza it's like especially for something that's not healthy it's like tombstone it's like really puts death right in your face and we love it yeah, we do love it. And I'll tell you, there it is. If people are like me, they love a fucking sodium bomb every once in a while, which is really bad. For, I mean, Tombstone has so, like, it has so much sodium in it. It's like, I don't even really know if, I don't even think I know what sodium really is. Other it's than just maybe salt. Like salt. It's just salt pizza. That's all. Yeah, That's it's why you salt. wake up. Do you get nightmares after you eat Tombstones? No, no, no. Mm. I always it's have wet dreams. <laughs> <laughs> it turns you so what is it turns which you is so- surprising because salt's supposed to help you retain water um, <laughs> oh man I've no, definitely I think you get that. nightmares you get nightmares after eating tombstone pepperoni pizza used to give me nightmares but i realized now it's just like an imaginal <laughs> thing like I, it wasn't a real thing but at some point i must have just believed that it like that's what happened so like it it happened a lot so i just wake up after eating pepperoni pizza with nightmares I stopped it recently because I was like, I think I'm done with this as something that's like a useful belief. Yeah, because you're yeah, eating man. pepperoni pizza like every other day. <laughs> and you're you like, to, this isn't the life I want to live. I don't want a nightmare <laughs> life of putting tombstones. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, man. It really that, is, though. That is a really ballsy thing to name your pizza when it's, not, when it's unhealthy. Right? And they just went for it. It's like an interdimensional like signal. If you like tombstones, you know like... You're from a certain place where you know cool shit is good. Because, like, I don't know. There's so many frozen pizzas now, too. You know, there's so many choices. And to to maintain the knowingness that Tombstone is the best with all the innovations. Tombstone's like the Richard Pryor of frozen pizzas. Yeah. You can always count on it. And guess what? It's it's It does some bad things to you. Yeah, sometimes. Um, yeah, sometimes. sometimes it's... And, and But it, you know what? It doesn't hide it. And I, I can't... I can't recommend this book enough if people like Richard Pryor even a mm. little bit. It's called Pryor Convictions. It's his autobiography. Oh, and shit. He literally has full disclosure about everything in his life, including the shit that people shy away from. People wouldn't want you to know about them. He is, um, you know, he is completely open about his past as a, and, you know, being on the, you know, the wrong side of domestic abuse. Yeah, well, exactly. there's not there's not a right side of domestic abuse. Uh, so you know, well, there's a better side, I guess. Yeah. Then, well, yeah, I You're, think it's better. Yeah, it's the difference between being like a person who's a victim and an asshole. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was the asshole. Yeah. So I mean, he's open about all that. He's also open about burning spoons until the fucking day he died, even though he had MS. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's just like what a and like that's when I really realized the prison. Or what a prison addiction can be. Yeah. When, what was his take on that? I mean, like, what what was he saying about his relationship to it at the end of his life? Like, outside he was saying of it was a fucking, you know, it was a, it, you know, like a a sad fucking prison. Wow. Um. You know, he wasn't glorifying it in any way. I mean, wow. see, that's the thing about pandemics. Uh, even though this is the first one I've ever been in. Well, this um, is my third, so I'm well first. Well, like this is your third. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through three global pandemics. What are you? What are you? A pussy or something? You yeah, know what, what are you new? What yeah. are you new? Um, <laughs> it it activates. I I'm hyper aware of the activating of certain parts of my brain. Right. Um, that like that are activated by fear. And a big part of my brain that's activated by fear is the addiction part. Totally. Those, those wires have been going fucking 
bonkers. Like it's almost like a busy switchboard back in the day. Like I've got all these like switchboard operators, you know, hold please. Uh, can you hold please? Uh, thank you for calling Ryan's addiction service. Hold please. Thank you for, yeah. you know, cause I got like, uh, you know, nicotine, nicotine, chew, chew, chew. Let's get some Coke. Let's get some Coke. Buy a bottle of booze. I did buy a bottle of Jim Beam. But um, nice. I haven't opened it yet. But like, I keep thinking like I need two hundred dollars worth of tobacco. Yeah, I okay. loaded up. Yeah. I, I went into the city and picked up some extracurricular supplies for an extended stay. So I don't want to make it seem like I'm above the fray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, yeah, I have, I have, and I will continue to resist the urge to go into the nicotine trap oh, while yeah, while I'm isolated. Them. I will literally. Not like if I allow myself to do that, once we reemerge into society as these butterflies or moths, and moths are also beautiful, um, I will not have a fucking jaw. I will, I'll have half my tongue removed from home surgery probably because of all the chewing tobacco I've been using. Do you smoke cigarettes though? I w- See, here's my problem with nicotine and tobacco like i when i'm on it i'm on every single form of it constantly all day long so i if have I'm, friends who love have you done rape have you done that snuff stuff that like you get shot up your nose and it hurts like a motherfucker it's tobacco i have, have never done, done the snuff Dude, correctly oh, when i was a I, kid i heard about snuff and i thought copenhagen was snuff and i snorted fucking copenhagen which has the you fuck know, is copenhagen i thought that's a city no, Copenhagen is a, uh, it's a dip. It's a very, very fine cut lip, lip, dip for tobacco for your lip, like skull and Kodiak. I've never dipped. And I, I honestly, I don't want to say I never will because then I usually end up doing it. But I, let's say that I, I have no affinity towards doing that. <laughs> yeah. And, and you save yourself the trouble. There's nothing there. Yeah. Um, there's nothing. And this is from someone who started dipping when they were, I don't know, 15 fucking years old. And then had as recently as three months ago had a dip in their lip. Um, There's absolutely nothing. There's nothing there. There's no reason to go there. Why do you do it? It's just an addictive habitual thing. The first time I ever did it, I almost fell down the stairs because I was buzzing so hard. And then you have you just been trying to chase that? And that's all I took. Like, this thing almost killed me. I must do more of it. You know, like... That kind of thing, like oh, I like I like not feeling normal. Let's let's do yeah. more of this, and then before you realize that you don't want to do this shit, then you've already got the addiction in you. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on what it is. I mean, because there's some things that I would I definitely do habitually. Like I'm I'm rolling two joints during this recording <laughs> this podcast, but I I like wish. simultaneously like two at the same time. I wish that'd be such a fucking oh. skill. Oh my god! Don't don't give me something to do during the pandemic when I'm trapped here. I'll learn how to do that shit. And YouTube that would be it. pretty cool. Yeah, definitely do a how to video. I've got I've got marijuana. I've also got oh fuck! I've got mushrooms here. Yeah, dude. See, this is what these times are for. Get weird, man. That's exactly what it's for. I also got a tube of itch X. I'm looking right next to my mushrooms is a tube of itch X. If you don't know what itch X is, it's next a, level. it's like a gel you use if um, you've been like ransacked by, uh, you know, insects that bite you and that cause an itch. Scabies? Uh, um, I don't think I've ever had scabies. I just found out what they were. I didn't. What are I, they? Never, they're like these little bugs that I guess crawl under your skin and bite you and give you a rash. Oh, there's also another um, bug like that that has a very dangerously name, has a dangerous name if you say it incorrectly. Um, but uh, that's what I had. I had the other the other bug that does that. What's I got the other in, bug? I got them in Florida. They're called chiggers. Chiggers. Yeah, and... It's a, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it just feels weird to even say it, but the, uh, yeah. So I got them in Florida. They were crazy bad where we were doing that last June. I was doing that paranormal oh, documentary no. and like, and cause they, they're smart enough to know to get you in the very sensitive soft skin spots. Why? So they, they just, they're just evolution. They just figured it out. They just know where to go on your body once they get on you. They go so like they go around your ankles, you know that spot, oh, that no. soft spot. Oh. You know they can get uh, behind your knees, um, you know, like your elbow area, your forearm. Um, I'm gonna move to the timeline where there's no chiggers. That's a really that's a fucking brilliant idea because I've lived there my whole life so far. So I'm gonna stay there. Yeah, stay there. 
Well, I'm just need that. I'm just reading you some Alice in Wonderland shit over here. Man, I heard a Neville Goddard talk the other day. <laughs> I, you know, what's funny is I hadn't listened to Neville Goddard in like three or four months. I mean, not that's not true. Like two or three months, and I listened to like a few here and there. And the la- the first one I picked up on, it's called "He Is Dreaming." It's this talk, and it's about all he uses is Alice in Wonderland the whole time. That's all he talks about in Tweedledee and Tweedledum and the King who's sleeping and dreaming the dream of Alice. It's so bugged out. It's so fucking crazy. I got to send you that talk. I have a couple of things that I think you would really enjoy. Take the mushrooms and listen to that. And That's a good idea. Can- I should also read the book. Which 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 one? The Isn't- Neville Goddard books? Yeah, there's so many of them. Oh, no, I meant the Alice in Wonderland book. Oh, I never read the book. Did you ever read the book? No, never have. I never read it. I just watched I've the seen movie. the movie, but not in a long, long time. I saw the movie a bunch, and I saw it a little bit in college. Again. Yeah, it's I'm really interested good. to see what happens when I do these mushrooms during this. How much do you have? Take. Do you have like a good amount? God, I don't even know a friend of mine. She gave them to me a while ago, and I haven't looked at them since. I totally forgot I have. I have them in this little tiny little chest that I keep, like random, like magical items on my bookcase. That's, a, that's the perfect place to put things. I also like charging things with stones, like substances, or you know what people would call drugs. I think this shit is all alchemy, just to be clear. I think this is what the Greeks were doing. They were just making drugs. And now that we just have them in different forms because we believe in like chemicals and fucking science and shit. But they were doing the same thing. Pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't I mean what else what else are people doing? You know what yeah, I mean? Like they allude to it constantly in the shit too. They're like Soma. Oh yeah, <laughs> Soma, that is one of the this is one of those. This is one of those things that is so um, elusive um, to scientists and like anthropologists have been trying to find exactly and pinpoint exactly what soma is or which plant or whatever you know that because I because different because soma is like I think it's it's cross cultural right mm-hmm. that specific mm-hmm. phrase it's, it's in it's in like every every part of the world i mean that used and wrote down stuff especially in the east and the west at least the greeks it seems to have traveled from at least india and asia through to greek Grecian times for the Eleusian mysteries so like egypt as well so it's like three continents they know that it was used or alluded to it's pretty crazy yeah i mean it all comes down to like i think I mean, I'd be lying if I said that a big part of my life wasn't, uh, you know, this quest for, you know, elusive truth or enlightenment or, you know, just trying to like, there's something sexy to me about the occult, you know, hidden uh, knowledge. So I think just by the mere fact that it's difficult to obtain creates so much of the drive for me in yeah. like trying to find it. That's an interesting little situation you've built for yourself there. I like doses of difficulty and effort, you know, balanced with effortlessness as well. Just like, like just oh. like things given to you, like just kind of like bestowed upon you almost. I I accept that as much as the other stuff. I've learned to not stub my nose at that shit for any reason. Because if that's showing up in your life and you get like a random, sometimes you got to go treasure hunting. There's nothing wrong with that. I love a good treasure hunt. But sometimes just something is just placed in front of you, which you placed in front of you ultimately. You just got to be like, yeah, I'll take that. That's, that, that's good. <laughs> Looks good to me. Checks out. And trust it, you know, and not think it's like some poison fucking trick or something. I'm like a gift horse in the mouth. Yeah. You know, yeah, there, that is... You know, I do, I do like that too. I do like when like something is like surprisingly just fucking poof right there. That's like, it. Oh, wow. That's so great. That's it. And then you'd be surprised the more you kind of accept that, how often that happens. If you want it to, again, it's up to you. you I'm also be- obsessed with, well, obsessed is the wrong word. I'm fascinated and delighted by thoughts of building treasure hunts for people. Oh, dude. And I almost feel like there are certain, like whenever I'm hiking places, I'm like, this would be a good spot to hide a thumb drive 
that I will reference Ooh. through a riddle in my last Ooh. will and testament. It's like a wizard's a wizard's <laughs> magic treasure hunt. I'm with it, dude. Yeah, but it's after I'm dead. It's stuff after I'm dead. Only um, after you're dead? But does, I guess it doesn't have to be, but I guess like the iteration that I've been kind of playing out for years now in my mind is that there is this, um, there's almost like the continuation of my quest becomes nice. the quest for many other people potentially. If they can fiddle out their fiddle out if fiddle they can, out they if have they, to put the fiddle if they can your- fiddle out the figures if they can figure out the the, the riddle um <laughs> <laughs> if they can figure out riddles that i leave after i'm dead because i am going to i definitely am leaving as long as i don't die like right now because i haven't i still haven't written them out i haven't i haven't figured them out exactly what i'm gonna do yet right. but i'm doing the thing where I will have a sealed envelope or something of some kind. I still have to buy a safe to put all this stuff in. Um, Is one of the clues going to be on your tombstone? Oh, that's a good idea. But I mean, I guess I could have a tombstone, although I don't want my body buried. I want to be planted as a tree. Um, Yeah, I was talking about that with someone else. That's like the best way to do it. Because it seems for me mostly unimportant, but it seems like that's a good thing to do is to have you be tree food. Dude, I I love trees so much. I want to fucking be a part of a tree. What if trees are the dominant life form, right? I, I don't think you're wrong. I think yeah. that they just might be. And um, we're like idiots. We're like, look at these trees, so boring, and yeah. just treeing it up. And they're like, you guys are cute. And I've dumb. been naming trees ever since I was a kid. And like, you know, I would name trees that I see all the time. And I have what if like all the trees name you. What if all the different trees? I want. I'd love to know you? what my name was. What, what if they it's all different me? names? What if it's just like each tree calls you a different name? That'd be weird. You know what I was thinking about regarding trees? It's like we never hear the wind. We hear the trees. Dude, I literally was on a walk the other day and literally had a conversation about that because it was so nice. And I realized like we're always hearing the wind hitting the trees. Yeah. Yeah. It's the tree we hear. It's not the wind. It has a song and a sound. Yeah, it's crazy. I love the idea of, of trees being the dominant species. And... And also the idea that there that everything is alive. My buddy, who's uh, this guy Mark Baroni, is one of my therapists, and we had a, a great chat earlier this week because he was talking about how it's quite possible that you know, if you launch from the perspective that you think the Earth is a conscious being, um, that it is forced us through what's happening right now to stop and take a break and yeah. really analyze what we're doing. And he's yeah. like, if, if you were the earth and you were conscious, That's exactly what you do. How could you, what is the most effective way to make everybody stop what the fuck they're doing? And virus. It's a virus. virus. Virus is the answer. Exactly. Hands down. It's not um, a tidal wave. It's not a worldwide earthquake. It's none of that. It's a virus. Virus. Yeah. And that really like kind of like fascinated me, but like, I, I just did this short film. If people are interested, I put it up on my YouTube, which is Ryan J. Singer, but you can find it on my Instagram at Ryan too. It's on my Instagram TV tab um, called Numera Sentia. It's a, it's a short film I made about uh, the singularity event when we realized that numbers are conscious. That's on your YouTube? Yeah, it's on my YouTube you got, page. You have, to, you have to put this shit out more because the algorithms aren't showing me. Showing you know, this. I was going to upload it to Facebook and I... I, I, I don't use Facebook. Yet. Fuck Facebook, dude. Fuck Facebook. I mean, I don't know where else to put it. I mean, I put here's it on Instagram. What here's what I'm learning. Instagram, Twitter for people who use Twitter, and then, dude, have you... Have I don't you know how you it? upload a video. You can't upload a video to Twitter, though. Sh- sure you can. They're not like a long one, but you do a clip to your YouTube or tell people to go to YouTube. Oh, yeah, I have been. Way. I've been putting it out on Twitter. To I, I linked it at least once or twice. I need I've to do it Twitter. more. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Do it more than you think you should, because then I'll I'll see it. Because I I literally I only follow like 130 people, but I actually read everything. But like I only in spurt, so I probably I'll miss it the first two times easily. Do it three times as much as you think you should. And just yeah, don't that's worry a good point. It. No one will be like, "You're posting too much, dude. What a dick. He thinks he's so cool." It'll just be like more people will actually see it because they'll be like, "Oh, now I can watch this thing." Because what else are people gonna do? Keep posting that shit. I didn't know it was on YouTube. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll post some more. It's also on Instagram. You can just watch it there if you if you want to oh. watch it on your phone. But it's oh, like yeah. a nine and a half minutes. Oh, fuck um, 
Perfect. But it's like, because I just couldn't get over the idea that like numbers What's are it called? Easy. What's it called again? Numera Centia. Numera Centia. Cool. Which is just like a scientific y sounding name I came up with for the sentience of numbers. I love um, it. Oh, shit. So it's a documentary about what happens when, um, and it's with the scientists who discover it, um, about what happens when uh, we realize that numbers are conscious beings. Uh, dude, you're so cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like the first thing I made during this um, during this lockdown, this isolation yeah, event that we're in. But um, God, what were, what were we? Ta- oh, we were talking about trees and everything. I just love that idea that that these things are alive, and that you know, once we get over our, I think what might happen as a result of this, and like the morphic resonance. Um, the idea of like a group of creatures, animals of the same type, all learning a lesson together. Once we reach that tipping point, then everybody in the, the whole entire species will kind of have this knowledge and yeah. it'll be just kind of like transmitted, um, you know, and regardless of their location. And uh, I, I just love that idea because we're born, I mean, much like creatures, like we've all seen the documentary where the lizards crack out of the eggs and run immediately to the beach or to the ocean. Yeah. They know it. It's like this embedded knowledge that we have. Human turtles. Be- turtles do All oh, the right? turtles, yeah. yeah. So it's like we we have the same stuff. You know, we also have embedded knowledge and we're also learning about intergenerational trauma, like trauma that's passed down from the Holocaust to the descendants of the Jewish people. Who, next up. Yeah. Yeah. And so like we have this like we have these like hard drives that come like pre programmed with like with files on them. Uh, even, you know, that we've never like gone out and actively gathered ourselves once after we were born. So I'm like wondering what will this do? Cause this is like becoming such a worldwide event and it's affecting everybody in such a way that what lesson could we possibly learn together and what will we, and what will, what will be the huge big change that happens as a result? Yeah, man. I think it's just going to be one of the coolest things humanity has ever seen. It's such a shift. I I love this stuff. I mean, like, I don't mean to downplay and minimize the loss of life that's going to happen because of this, but as a catalyst for change, dude, like you just said you created and put out this thing. This is like the first thing you did during this pandemic. Like you immediately were motivated to make like some cool ass shit. You know what I mean? Like that's a huge signal that gets amplified amongst a lot of people. And I think people who are in the fear of what's going on right now, like I get it. I feel it at times. Like that's why I watch the Fox news shit. It's not just to be a reckless asshole, but like to tune into those frequencies and just be like, I get it. But like, man, so much good stuff is about to flood in to this world. And like the virus, this, this thing isn't the end of the world. I watched 12 monkeys. It's not 12 monkeys. Right. And in 12 Monkeys, they actually stopped the virus. That's what's implied at the end of that movie. Not to ruin it. <laughs> just ruin well, it. The movie's 20 years old. So spoilers yeah, be damned. Fuck you guys if you haven't watched 12 Monkeys. <laughs> Someone's like a 20 year old. They're like, back when Brad Pitt it. was fuckable. Remember those days? Like, like anyone's ever said that. <laughs> oh, you mean back when Brad Pitt was, uh, was actually fuckable? No, he's still. <laughs> Being a 90-year-old, I think he, dude, yeah, Brad Pitt's cool. That movie is really good, by the way. It, it Loved it. I, I re-watched it, actually, about a month ago. Oh, good time. Just randomly. Man. Just randomly watched it again. So you uh, created this whole situation? Yes, I imagined the- uh, Thanks, dude. Well, because I was going to ask you earlier, you know, because I was like, is it possible that you, that by you, and I'm not trying to put too much importance on your shoulders here, but by you simply starting to watch Fox News, did you make them all believe that the virus was real? Like, that's... A- <laughs> I was like, wait, did they all change their mind once Noah started watching? Um, that would be so weird. That'd be really no, funny. I, hope, I hope not. I hope not. But you know, that's when, like, like, we've gone too far. Like, you and I are having a conversation in the future, like, and so then I started watching Fox News, and you'll never guess what happened. That's right, they all changed. <laughs> and is it a coincidence? Uh, that I changed them? No, uh, I can do that. Uh, so send me your donations. Um, Maybe I just tuned in at the time where it was more resonant with where I was. And that doesn't say anything about the actual objective objectivity of what they're putting out. But I don't know, man, like it's, I'm starting to learn there's not a lot of dissonant notes. It's just like, it's perspective of how we hear it. 
It's like, I don't know. It, sounds it really important. is. I mean, like I talked to my mom the other day. My mom lives in Southern Ohio. I mean, she's in Florida because they're snowbirds. So they'll be down there for a while, but they're retired. And, nice. and she, she said something that I wasn't aware of. And I don't know, you know, I'm not going to go fact check like everything my mom says to me. Like I'm not living that kind of life, you know, cause I'm just not interested in being that person. But she's <laughs> totally, but she's like, you know, the interesting thing too is when, um, you know, we were talking about perspective in like how things are framed and she goes, when Trump, uh, like, I don't know when it was, I don't know the exact date when he shut down, uh, visitors from China coming in and, uh, which was before all this was, so it was like weeks before any of this yeah. stuff has been happening, but it's like when we knew that, you know, COVID was out there, she's like, he shut down. He shut down the China travel coming into the United States and everyone called him a racist. And she goes, it's interesting now that you can look back on that and say, or was he trying to get out and trying to get out ahead of this? Right. Um, but at the time he was a ra- he called a racist by so many people. So it's like, it is, it's perspective on how you're filtering and like, yeah, it's like, like you said, there's no dissonant notes, but like, how are you, what are you bringing to it? that that really shapes the nature of what you think it is that you're hearing or processing because you know people will look people who support him will look back and be like he, he what do you mean he tried to you know blah 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 and it's like okay are we gonna sit here and argue this shit or are we gonna like focus on what really matters here and that's like feeling connected i've never felt more connected to right? everyone on the entire planet than i do right? right now it's it's overwhelming in a in a good way to where totally. i was walking around the grocery store and i almost started fucking crying because i was just so in love with everybody isn't and, it the uh, best when you it's catch the that fucking spin it out best yeah. and i just kind of wrote it you know what i mean and to me it was like this is you know an irony is probably one of my favorite things in the world just because yeah because of comedy and everything else, but like the fact that, you know, being forced into isolation truly makes everyone realize how connected they are to each it's other. Amazing. It's truly amazing because we're realizing those of us who are into the woo and all this other shit, we, we always, you know, loved and you know, leaned into the idea of our spiritual and our, you know, our conscious connection. And I, something like this shows how physically like literally physically connected every single one of us are. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty awesome. It is. It's like a tethering web in this dimension that like binds us together. And it's it's important to enjoy it too. And that's the beautiful thing about this is like in three months or less when it's not as crazy and we're kind of looking at this like it's a flu type thing and we kind of have it under control and it's not all happening at once, which is definitely going to happen like people will be so much more appreciative for just like the little shit in their lives. And also people will have shifted from versions of themselves to completely new versions because of what this is forcing the people to deal with. Like this is, it's hard to get the perspective when you're going through it and in it. But if you can sense where you end up, you get an idea of what's happening right now. Oh and, my and God. You can really start to enjoy it. Yeah. That's, that's what I wanted to say earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what you because what you're talking about here, like, you know, I mean, needless to say that, you know, some of this stuff is going to be a little like much for people basically <laughs> when we get into the political stuff, right? When we've been, yeah, the things we've been discussing and that's fine. But I think there's a big difference between someone having present foresight and being an asshole. Yep. There's a total difference. But here's the problem. When someone has present foresight, which I think is something that everyone is capable of having, but not everyone is, you know, commits their life onto a path of totally, you know, trying to, you know, enlighten themselves or become more recognizing that everyone's doing that. Everyone's doing that. It's just the recognition that an awareness that you're doing that for sure. Yeah. So to those people, it could and very likely does come off as you're being an asshole. You're yeah. not, you know, you're not thinking about blah, 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 blah. When in fact it is the ability to have foresight, but in the present that makes it, I think that's what, like, if I had to guess, cause you know, I'm not fucking Buddha, you know, what I mean? 
Well, you are. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, but like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like the, if I had to guess what true, like just like re- reaching like a bliss state, right. And like detachment, um, it is, it is having like that foresight in such a, in that like, almost like, you know, like, oh, I can see the, you know, can't see the forest through the trees, blah, blah, blah. But like, you can always see the forest and the trees simultaneously. Yes. Yeah. When you can see the big picture and the smallest detail and understand their relationship to one another, like in the moment, uh, all the time, that's like the achievement. That's when you unlock yes. that, you know, the real fucking how juice. How fun is reality then, number one? And what can you do when you realize that and are still in this dimension of time? That's what God, I'm getting so of, jacked up over here. Dude, it's the best. It's literally the best. And then, you know, when everyone starts talking about meditation, it doesn't become this thing you do with your eyes closed when you go to sleep unless you're sleeping. That's totally, that's fun meditation. It's when you're wide awake. This whole world is open-eyed meditation when you fucking live from that, what you just described right there. What you just described is just like really understanding the rules of how everything works here. And it's pretty fun. And it doesn't, it is not a detached, not caring, not understanding the suffering of the world and what that means. It's just really like understanding that, like, oh shit, I understand what this game is. I understand the perspective that we can hold at the same time and like see truly not love your enemies as like a nice goody thing to do, but it's like, oh my God, this makes it incredible. And we can actually improve this. And I'm telling you, dude, like we incarnated as human beings, anyone listening to this at this point knows this at like the best time. Like literally, this is like the best time. It's like, hey, watch everything get super fucking amazing. Plant the seeds figuratively, metaphorically, and literally for the future. Like watch what happens. People, people, it's just, I know, I don't want to sound overly utopian because I'm very, you know, cautious against gassing people up, but I'm telling you like, people will see the effects of what this isolated, unprecedented period in human history does and the ramifications of it you know, years down the line. But when you have that present foresight, whatever you want to call it, that awareness in the present moment, dude, it's super fun. And it's not even like, I thought it would be lame at first. I'd be like, oh, I'm so spiritual, it'd be lame. No, it's just like you're super fun and cool and happy and awesome and not because you're crazy, but because things are actually fun and cool because you can actually have them be that way, even during a pandemic. And people are really calibrating to that reality. Like I know a lot of people who have written in to me, hit me up on Instagram and they're like, hey, like, is it okay to feel like amazing during this? Because I know it's sad and bad for a lot of people, but I feel great. I'm like, that's totally fine. Like, don't be reckless and an asshole and go lick railings and like spit on people. But like, yeah, you're allowed to have a good time and make great art and do awesome things and be with cool people. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. It's the best. I'm really happy and grateful. I think people will look back at this period of time in history, like specifically like our lifetime, like eras. And, uh, and you know, maybe it comes off as a little too like arrogant, but I mean, can you imagine like, uh, like the way I see it is that people in the future will look back and like, can you go, oh, could you imagine being alive during that, during right. that period where, where right. human beings fucking woke up Dude. and like to the infinite fucking beauty of what they were. Can you imagine like being on, at, you know, like, I mean, it's been a long, it's been a long, you know, it's been a long con thinking we were just these fucking animals with, right. you know, uh, so, I mean, but it's, so it's been a long time happening. Um, but like being at a moment right now where it's like, so where cool. it's crystallizing in such a way. So and cool. I don't think it's any accident that the paranormal conspiracy, new age, spiritual communities have all like merged almost like this. Like they were on these three separate roads that they thought they were like alone driving their cars no. on. And so after a while, they're like, you know what? We don't even need headlights on. You know, it's just us on this road. And then all of a sudden, there's the intersection of 
of woo and all three <laughs> cars in the last handful of years just smashed into each other and everybody right. stumbles you know so you have a yoga instructor stumble out of their their car like like rubbing their their eyes and then there's like you know a guy who's a conspiracy theorist wearing a JFK shirt walk, stumbles out of another car and then there's a guy who gets out of a car with like a you know he's got his uh, night camera night vision camera because he's looking for ghosts or you know big nice. with his Bigfoot keychain they're like what's going on where are we're all this who are you oh we're all the same place <laughs> <laughs> and so like that I feel like that's what's happened and I, I honestly believe here's some of the big changes I think I think that'd be a fun to talk I want to like hear from you about what you think like some of the actual phys- like the, the, the tangible things that we can realize that, that we see in the new world I think one of the big ones is going to well there's a couple big ones and they're related to people's work that I feel like are, are on the horizon because of everything that's happened right now yeah. And once we're out of it, you'll see this happen. You'll probably see it unfold. It's my hope anyway, that a lot of people are going to wake up to like, I need to be doing what I want with my life. No yeah. more of this bullshit job, right? And the second thing that I think is going to make that possible, that's going to be like in accord with that is many companies are going to realize we don't need offices. We don't need these big buildings for offices because everybody is being forced oh, to work from home. Of course, of course. And so companies are going to realize, holy shit, we don't need to spend all this money on renting all this office space this whole time because we are just as effective and, and we cut costs by having people stay home. So I think what you're going to have is a major transition away from office space for a lot of big business, medium business, um, even small business in accord with people having more time to themselves um, because of that and also because of what they're experiencing right now and really understanding like I need to stop fucking my life away and I'm going to start doing what's what's really good. That's what this shift is and people are either going to go there willingly and accept that they've laid out a very nice path for themselves or they're going to go there kicking and screaming and being forced to to kind of do that. I, Jessa had the best description of it, which was the washing machine, which was like, you know, people will get thrown into this washing machine if they didn't want to do the work and they're going to get rolled around in it and then like plop down into what she calls 5D. And that's totally what's happening right now to so many people. Like I, I, it's just, it's just part of the process, but if you can ride the waves and kind of direct, like what you're describing is like what people really need to deal with inside of themselves. And we're at a point in like society right now where like shit is basically shutting down for the vast majority of people. Like they're being asked to not go to their jobs, not interact with other people. Like this is unprecedented just to even be able to ask this, like, and we see it play out differently all over the world in China that, you know, we see that they're using their social monitoring stuff to like kind of kind of force people to do this. Who knows if that's really accurate, what we're getting through here, but it seems like it to places where they didn't really do anything. And it kind of broke down to South Korea who had kind of like an efficient, you know, manageable thing to all these different spectrum of things. But like, the truth is, is like everyone is going to have their own reaction to this individually. And that ultimately determines the direction of their lives. Like, and what better example of that than being isolated, like as a hermit, as a person who needs to individually figure out what they want to like do with their lives. Like what makes them feel good? You can't use the excuse that like, oh, I have to go to this job now. That's just what I'm supposed to do. Like everyone is being asked to reevaluate that shit. And the fact that it's happening collectively is just like, mind-blowingly amusing to me like it's <laughs> like i'm like yep definitely moved into the best timeline like and i also love that for a lot of us this coincided with kind of waking up or just like recognizing we have the ability to shift our reality with our minds or our imagination whatever you want to call it like it really dovetailed nicely into such a global connective thing like it's just the coolest shit ever to me so yeah, man, it's going to play out in like ways we can't even imagine, but definitely with the office space shit. It's totally ridiculous. Why do we need this stuff? The commuting and all that? It's nonsense. It's so yeah, crazy. for sure. I got a, a, a message from an old friend of mine today saying, and it was so random. Basically, it was along the lines of, I now understand why teachers drink so much. I have such oh, a newfound, yeah. I have such a newfound respect for you. And 
keep in mind, I only taught for like three fourths of one year. Is it was it was the extent of my school teacher experience. I was a what substitute did, what teacher. Did you teach? Half I taught grades. I taught, I taught math and science at a Montessori, a public Montessori school in Dayton, downtown Dayton, and it was fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And oh, uh, and so I got brought in as a substitute teacher who got hired on full time in the second quarter of the school year because two different teachers had quit that classroom previously. Oh, wow. Um, Luckily, I had no teaching experience whatsoever, or I probably would have quit too, because I would have realized how crazy it was. Wow! Um, but so my ignorance was bliss in that situation, I guess. But um, so like he sent me a message. You know, I, I was a teacher in two thousand one, two thousand two, or two thousand and two. I think is when I wow two thousand two, early two thousand three. So um, <clears throat> so like that's the uh, so like seventeen years later. I get a message from someone saying like, I now understand like what it's like to be a teacher because their kids have been home obviously. Um, and so I think you're going to have a newfound respect for the people who are doing the work yeah. that truly, truly matters in life. And that's the education of our children. Uh, those who provide the food that keeps us alive, truck yep. drivers, um, people who work at your local grocery store. They're fucking, they're out there, they're doing it. And when I was at the grocery store, I just kept saying thank you to people. Th oh thank you for God, being here people. at work. And, and you start to connect with them on a human level, like where you just, they were just, yeah. for me, like, I don't know. I realized, in, I think when I went to college in Boston that like, I think it was actually when I started doing acid when I was like 15, that it's, it's always important to treat people in one-to-one -one interactions like like people like human beings so but something like this you connect on such a deeper level with people even like simple interactions that would like be nothing in public now are like hyper meaningful and important and like because like people are connecting on a much deeper level because they recognize even if not consciously but subconsciously the importance of what's going on it's like it's like the weather if the weather like just turned crazy every single second like of every day people are like what is this and it's a suspended disbelief period i love it i, I don't know man it's just the coolest fucking thing to me <laughs> i mean it's unlike anything we've experienced for sure not, i love and, it so much and it, it, it's it's and you know and it's actually and it's just ramping up to, to uh, what it is going to be and i mean i was just at the pharmacy the other day picking up my flow nays and uh that good shit my sniff sniff and mm. as and there was no line this was just two days ago there was no line and um i walk up you know, I do the thing, my birthday and my name and all that stuff. And the the young woman working was, you know, ringing me up and I could, you know, she's in it. You know what I mean? She's like, oh, yeah. she's fucking in it. So I go, so I just, I was like, this is an opportunity maybe. And, you know, and I was just like, so how are you holding up? And she just looked up at me and then she just like deeply exhaled. <sighs> you know, it's kind of crazy. You know, but it was like, we had a yeah. moment, you know what I mean? We had a moment where we were people because we were being in the moment of our lives. Yeah, you connected in, in a real way. And it gave her like a second to like take, literally take a breath. You know what I mean? Right. And um, it also gave me a moment to be, to show her that I'm grateful that she's there so I can get my fucking nose spray. I can go without my goddamn nose spray right now. You know what I no, mean? No, I look at every situation right now as like so karmically laden, like in terms of energy exchanges that are like very meaningful. Like even like I'm saying, like those simple interactions with people who are like you're buying something from, like this is some like we're in the weirdest of times. If you're meeting those people then, like that's some deep shit. Even if it seems like a simple grocery exchange, that's it's there's some real service and gift being provided, you know, there. Yeah, it's, the I, opportunity. Oh, it's oh, it's fucking overwhelming, dude. Yeah. The the opportunity that we all have to show how much we love one another is un fucking precedented i mean yeah. it's it's reminiscent to some degree on a smaller scale because this is worldwide of 9-11 and uh when 9-11 happened in the united states that's probably the first time in my memory as a person who grew up here that people totally same were same like thing. so my dad was like, saying too hyper totally. aware of each other um and that we are all people 
and uh, that we are all so fucking deeply connected and we are like shook by the universe to be reminded of such a thing. Yeah. And um, in this country, know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, in this country. And then I think this, you know, because it's happening in most of the world. There's certain places where it's still not like this, I, I think, you know, in the world. But um, <clears throat> I think it's just like such a gift for all of us to to understand how much we love and need each other and we're given an opportunity to finally truly express it in the simplest of ways and it's fucking so cool i mean you're right i mean i so i'm on board with that aspect of this whole thing um and it's like you know when we come out on the other side of it all and which i'm not even worried about right now because right because that's like taking it focus really away from, okay. yeah, and it's taking focus away from the moment. You what know? are you doing right now? Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Like it, the shit's gonna happen either way. Also, like going back to the every death is a suicide thing. Like if it's your time to go in Corona, then it's your time. It's is not an excuse to go out and do like crazy shit, but like do what you really want to do in life. Like make the thing you wanted to make. Learn about the thing you wanted to learn about. You know, within. You know, if you want to go like up the mountain, like you were saying, go do that until they say, you know, that's not a good idea to do it. You're allowed to go hike. You're allowed yeah, to go. Yeah, I went to the, the mountain and yeah, I buried a jar out there the other day. It's totally fine, man. That's amazing. And you're having a very unique, also for people who are going out in these times and being like responsible about it, it's amazing. It's like the world was just yours. No one else is in these amazing landscapes and places. And it's just you and like whoever you're with. It's fucking crazy. It's like a magical, magical time to be alive. And, you know, I think everyone should be savoring it rather than fearing it. And I'm not saying that, like, this is an excuse to lead your life as normal. Appreciate the kind of weirdness of what's going on. And, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's for most people, this is really important for everyone to hear. For most people, regardless of precautions that are taken, you're going to be okay. There are going to be some people who are affected by this. It's a wave of people who chose to not be on this planet after this, but it's not anything more than most viruses that happen or most other things that take people's lives regularly every day. But if it makes people appreciate life a little bit more and the experience of having a body and senses, that's great because this shit is fucking awesome. So it's a good thing. It's not bad. People are listening. Yeah, people are listening to their bodies right now more than ever. Totally. Is totally. my throat telling me something right now? Wait, is my head is my head telling me? You're in control like, of that too. Yeah. I, I say this to people. Have you realized you're a paragon of health yet? Like you're you're the epitome of health if you want to be. When you feel a little tickle in your throat, is your immune system amazing and going to fight that and you're going to take a nap and wake up and feel incredible? Or are you going to say, oh, this is how I get sick. This is all oh, I'm going to get sick now because I felt a little tickle. Just see see if you, there's a relationship between your immune system and your mind. There's This, this is an unprecedented territory for us and it's a good opportunity especially if you're quarantining it's like you know get a little tickle what's going on there i know people who are quarantining weeks before this who started getting like little sick things and they hadn't had contact with like people in weeks because like it's just like and they got sick there's weird shit going on there's energy hitting this planet from a lot of different places notice the relationship between your body and how you feel whether it's yours whether you're picking up on other people's energy there's a whole fucking subtle level of shit that's going on right now that people might not be tuning into but um i don't know it's the best <laughs> it's a great time to be alive yeah and it's uh and i think like what you're saying is what i would argue is an example of present foresight like yeah. we're talking about and it's also i would be totally remiss and it'd almost be unforgivable if i didn't bring up the fact that this is the best time in the history of the world to get into the video game Civilization by Sid Meier. Oh, dude. Can I played, I buy it? Can I buy it from Mac? Of course. Oh, yeah. Which, it's on the, which it's is on the, the Steam. Latest? It's on the Steam store. Civ 6, oh, dude. You Civ have to get my Civ. buddy Tim, my buddy Tim Irie. He's a paranormal investigator in Dayton, Ohio area. He turned me on to Gathering Storm, which is a expansion pack. You have to get that because okay. it, it has global warming and like volcanoes okay. and hurricanes. And what about all, pandemics? Does it have pandemics? It doesn't have a pandemic on there. Because I need to Ender's game this if I'm going to do it. You know, Ender's game where like he saves the world, like he's playing a video game, but he's actually like doing it for real and he didn't know it. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, this is, 
Oh, well, I just finished an Epic game and um, because I have it on Mac and PS4. Wow. And I, I mean, I probably put in. Who were you? 40 hours on this thing. I just finished. I mean, I was staying up till six in the morning, waking up at 10. Like what culture were you? Oh, this last one? Yeah. Germany. And I'll tell you why I was Germany before people freak out. No, no, because, no, totally. Because they hate Jews, because they hate Jews, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Germany lets you have an extra um, district in your city, um, which it depends. You're only allowed to have so many districts in your city, depending on population of city, and your city has to grow, as you know. Oh, Germany, they have it for the Switch. Amazing. I'm yeah, they have it. On the, I almost bought a Switch like a month ago. I have a Switch. Travel. I have it. Oh, yeah, you, so you can get it on Switch. Um, and it's Civ 6, and it's un fucking believable i wanted to win through diplomacy or through culture or through science um but uh pound maker the leader of the Cree, uh was getting ready to win a cultural victory so i had to i had to go to war with him i couldn't because i was going to lose the um, leader of the Cree. the the expansion packs have so many different world leaders you can be there's probably like 50 who's the Cree? uh if I'm not mistaken, it's a uh, tribe of Native Americans. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I'm, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm so sure with this. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get it. Yeah, I'm and get so it. Cree was uh, uh, so pound maker, the uh, leader of the Cree, um, was getting ready to win a cultural victory like very soon, and so I had to start a war with him because I was gonna lose. Well, if you're gonna start a war, and then the Canadians started shit with me, and so I, you know, one thing led to another, and I had to have a domination victory, and I. I, I'm not happy about it, but I nuked the Canadians. I dropped Holy nukes shit. on, uh, on Toronto? I, dropped, I dropped a nuclear uh, a nuclear bomb, and then I dropped multiple thermonuclear Ooh. bombs. Just hold on, just hold on, hold on. I want to dissect this because I know the the rules of this game. What city did you bomb? Toronto? No, I bombed. Uh, I believe it was uh, Ottawa because that was their capital. Wow, they posted up in Ottawa. Wow. That's yeah, I think Ottawa up. is the capital. Uh, uh, and so, uh, how many times did you have to nuke them? Well, I just nuked the city once, but I, I felt they only had three. They had like three cities left, and I was just got tired of using my bombers. So yeah, I, I yeah, and I had it. so I just dropped nukes on all three of them. Can you clean up the radioactive? Yes, areas? you can, but your right. your your workers will get sick and die wow. while and they're you doing made that executive decision. Yeah, I did because then I then I dropped a nuke on the. Uh, so on you crack, really... I, I dropped a nuke on Krakow, which is the Pol- uh, the Polish capital. Yo, how many people did you nuke, dude? And then I nuked, uh, yeah, and then I nuked the Coupe. You were the, Germany. K U P E. I nuked the Coupe uh, because they were just kept talking shit to me all game. What city did you nuke of theirs? What was? Uh, the name I can't of remember the name of it. it was like a, it was it was a two you name. You can't thing. even remember the name of remember. the city you nuked. I can't remember all the ske- <laughs> I can't remember the names of the skeletons I put in the ground. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I love it. But it, 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 it. Like that game probably took 40 hours of gameplay. I've been playing it for weeks, for two weeks. What if that's just like what six this in the world morning. is? What if that's just what this world is? Someone playing Civ? Yeah. Wow, I hope it's not me because... <laughs> because you're nuking the <laughs> fuck out of people and you don't even remember the names. Well, I wanted to win through peace, but I'm not going to lose. No, I feel you, man. Totally. So I want to lose the game. I mean, I, I think you're, and you're I also right. played on a high difficulty level. I was playing on a very high diff, but here's the thing I didn't even play on the largest map. Oh, which, the large maps are incredibly difficult. It's, and the game takes so long. It's like years. So, yeah. So, this is the perfect time to start a game like that that's going to take you literally, you know, 80 hours of playing the game. Did you ever play? Win. Did you ever play Risk when you were a kid? I love Risk. Risk is oh, my favorite game of all time. Yeah. Oh, me too. That's it's my number game. one. It's my number oh, one. Oh, God. I loved Risk. That I used to play... You know what? Maybe I'll do that again. I used to play solo games of Risk. I didn't even know you could do that. How do you, you do that? Well, you can't. You just you play against yourself. I, I How had do you a, play against yourself? I had a four-man game of Risk going against myself. <laughs> And my friends thought I was the fucking craziest person in the world. This is like, uh, but who better to play than someone you know their moves? (laughs) This is metaphysically speaking. This makes perfect sense. (laughs) This was early two thousand. This was late nineties, early two thousand. This is when Uh, I started to take acid, so it's adding up. (laughs) You were taking acid. I was playing four man games of Risk alone. 
It makes sense. Trying to figure out my motivations of, and like, you know, what the color of the pieces, uh, like what effect that would have on my motivations. Like, would it affect the personality style of that leader uh, that I was choosing to be? It adds up. It adds up. That's the best way to play risk. Is to embody the cultural... Yeah, dude, I want to play Civ now, though. You definitely gave me the bug. I know dad, exactly oh, what dude, it's like. you got to. I called you dad on accident. Dad, <laughs> you got to. You got to get on Civ, Dad. I'm, I'm on it, son. Because Don't we can play worry. online. Oh, but you're, you're gonna get it on Switch, so we won't be able to play online. Well, maybe I can get it on Steam. My Switch is in quarantine at my sister's. Oh yeah. So if you download on Mac at the Steam store, I bought it when it was on sale. Um, oh, new expansion out now. Oh, Very there's a new positive. Ex- Wait, there's they a new. Say, well, it says I'm gonna lose my mind. Out now. Yeah. I'm gonna lose my out. mind. No, no, no. Release date October twentieth. Oh, okay. It must be the ga- the Gathering Storm expansion changes the game in such a way that I wasn't ready for. And I was already addicted and playing the, the I was playing this game constantly whenever I needed like a break. So like every couple months I would just kinda lock I mean, I would text you about it. I'm like, oh man, the sieve. But um a Civ is good. Yeah, I'm like a little burned out on it now because that last game took so long that I just can't even think about sitting down and starting a new map right now. I like but, video uh, games; they're fun. But yeah, to- totally into it. I did uh, buy The Last of Us at my roommate's recommendation. That game that's like uh, some people say it's the best game that's ever been made. The Last of Us. I played that. Yeah, and did so play I played. It? I played the, the night I downloaded. It, I, I played it for like two hours, and I haven't touched it since. It's been like about a week it and gets, a half or two weeks. It gets scary. I'm not a huge fan of scary games, and it gets pretty scary. But it is a very good game. I beat it. It's uh, it's yeah. I hear it's cool. awesome. It's really well made, but uh, it's definitely, whew, it's intense. It's super intense. Yeah, I, I'm so. I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of shooter games, and um, but it's not it's all, really it's, a shooter game. It's, it's kind a of a puzzle logic yeah. shooter, first person. It's like a unique. It's good. It's a good yeah, game. It's pretty cool. It looks pretty cool, I, and I was enjoying it. I know that there's like talk about the movie right now, and there's oh, uh, cool. and about casting the movie and like who oh. they're going to cast. Um, but uh, and I know the because uh, the girl in the video game was based on what's her name. Uh, Oh shit! Well, I can't remember. But uh, anyway, I mean, I guess it's what time is it there? It's two in the morning where you are. Two in the morning. We're gonna. We're gonna. We did this. Yeah, we did. We this did. during a pandemic. We so what are we doing? Are we just releasing this on both of our streams? No. What we should do is let's. We'll cut it here. We're done. We did it. Nail it. High five. Virtual pandemic. High five. <laughs> cut it in the middle. At the peak break. Yeah. Exactly. And you pick a half, I'll pick a half. And upload tonight? I mean, I'm going to go to sleep. Well, how about (laughs) this then? How about I upload the first half tonight? Because mine's supposed to come out tonight anyway or tomorrow. Perfect. And so I'll I'll upload my first half tonight before I go to bed because I woke up at two in the afternoon today. So I'm going to be up for a little bit. Amazing. And uh, I just reheated a pot. There's no way I'm drinking coffee at 11 p.m. That's fucking. And you have that delicious tombstone. Oh, I've got a couple slices left. Uh, so I'll <laughs> upload part one, and then tomorrow, whenever, whenever you get around to it, perfect. Or whenever you just upload part two, whenever you Incredibly or whenever you easy. get around to it. Yeah, incredibly easy for me to do. We nailed it. All right, hell yeah, dude, this was fun. Yeah, and we never sure. once even either one of us never once said our names. <laughs> <laughs> I think people know. I think know people who know we too. are. Yeah, oh, dude, <laughs> if amazing. they're listening. To this. <laughs> They're like, what is this? What the fuck? I'll do a little intro on my half. So, you know. Yeah, I'll probably, maybe I'll do the same. Uh, Regardless, this was fun. And I mean, who knows? This is probably the first of multiple ones we'll be doing during this. Let's say our names now just so we have them on. Ryan Singer, thank you for doing this. Hey, (laughs) Noah Lampert, it has been my pleasure doing this. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Uh, us for joining us yes thank us uh, for we're in this us. together that's one thing that's really really clear and this is a good example of that of yeah, how man. connected we are i love it i love it bud dude this was great you're the best and uh you're the best and we'll talk soon get some sleep okay all right Peace. okay nighty night <laughs>
Thanks for listening to that episode. Go check it. Go check it. Check it. Check it. Rick, Rick, where with the DJ? Somebody come get her. She's dancing like a stripper. Who's on TikTok? I'm going to be posting stuff on TikTok. TikTok's the best. Just get on there to watch videos. It's super fun. I love it. Uh, Rate and review this podcast. Subscribe. Patreon. That's where all the shit's going down. People know there. We're doing readings. We're doing fun stuff. It's getting fucking weird. Come on. It's fun. You know what it is. Synchronicity. No, wait. Uh -uh. Patreon.com slash synchronicity. There are links on the website, syncpodcast.com. You want to send me an email? You've listened this far. You've listened past the music. Noah at syncpodcast.com. All right. See you in a few days. Until then, happy imagining.